Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you guys are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio, all the way live from North Carolina down to Playa del Carmen, Mexico. An amazing person by the name of Angie Hipple. Angie, how are you? I am so great, Jay. Thank you for having me. So Angie is a pretty amazing human being, and she actually has or channels uh, a, essentially an angelic entity or group of entities known as Judah. And you guys are going to be finding out much more about Judah today. I'm very, very excited uh, to be even talking on the show because something was just cleared from my consciousness right before the show. So this show is going <laughs> to resonate oh, yeah. through the universe and vibrate and oscillate at the highest frequency. So let me give you guys her uh, a little bit of her bio and background. She, she is a thought leader, author, and inspirational speaker with 30 plus years of experience as a recording artist. She channels, again, Judah considered the Oprah of the cosmos, Judah invites in a veritable A-list of higher dimensional beings, such as the illustrious Archangel Michael, to join in the conversation about human enlightenment, awakening your power, found within you, and spiritual wisdom from beyond. Judah, um, Angie, aka Judah, it's amazing to have you here today. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm fabulous. It's really good to be here, Jay. It's so awesome. Time. So, so let me. So, you and I have been talking off air, and again, I, I feel so. I'm so grateful right now. Like I have such amazing energy. I'm like firing through the cosmos right oh, now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and again, grateful to you, and grateful to Judah, and just the energy that we're creating here. But mm -hmm. as I've been doing pretty much in 2023, and by the way, today for the record is Thursday, May 25th. So we're about a month out from the summer starting. Um, and we are in, as you know, of course, amazing times, right? Yeah. And that's a perspective that, you know, anyone can take. If you go back the last three years, you know, a lot of people probably can say glass half empty. You know, we were in insane times, right? Scandemic, people wearing mm -hmm. masks, people being lied to, people still out there in public, as you know, wearing masks. I mean, it's insane what has happened to the collective consciousness of America slash the global world, you know, everywhere. Are your thoughts, and again, maybe this is even a question for Judah, depending on where we want to go with this, are we, and I know that one of our talking points is talking about the, the dimensions of the third and fourth and fifth and, and true you and all that stuff, but are we, and I know this is a huge question to start you with, and you know the listening audience is asking these questions, but are we truly, as a species, closer to whatever it is, an essential timeline, an event you know, that people talk about where consciousness does increase and there is a quote-unquote new earth formed? Absolutely. And I'm, uh, Judah is definitely not just glass half full, but full and running over, full and running awesome. over full and running over. I mean, if you, I wish you guys could be in these, you know, I do a session almost every day with someone, a channeling session, and I am blown away about the unconditional love, joy, health, miracles that are getting poured out on people, even through, you know, this context of this Zoom kind of platform that we do. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing what's going on. You know, so what Judas talk to me about from the very beginning is that their presence and their big push right now, um, their, their big booming angelic voice coming through. There's about 350,000 uh, angelic souls in this family called Judah. They're all about waking people up, growing them up emotionally with, and spiritually. They've They've talked to me about how spiritual maturity is emotional maturity. You can't right. separate those two things. 
They're all about waking people up, bringing them up into higher and higher forms of, of vibration, enlightenment, enlightenments of love, of joy, of peace, and really showing people how to, in their very real 3D material world, what they can see, touch, taste, feel in their work life, their family life, their neighborhoods and communities, to, to transform those places with their high vibrational energy and through a, a status of enlightenment. And one of the things they brought to my attention in the beginning is there's a there was a, a line that Jesus said. He said, you will become like the angels. You are the sons of God and you will be like the angels. Well, what in the heck did he mean by that? Uh, and Judah explained this. This is the next evolutionary step for us as humans. We are evolving into this angelic state where there's so much purity of heart of motivation, of love, of, um, of pure health, vi- you know, with our bodies vibrating with, with energy. Um, you know, when Judah first came into my life, you know, one of the first things that happened was I was instantly healed of a two year chronic illness. And that um, came on the heels of COVID for me. And so I was instantly back to health. And I had such enormous amounts of energy running through my body. Sometimes uh, even my teeth would vibrate and my yeah. whole body would vibrate like I was uh, a lightning rod was going through me. But we're, you know, our bodies are up leveling. Mm-hmm. Our spirits, our, our mind, our emotions, everything is up leveling, up leveling, up leveling for those who want it. Not right. for everybody, for those that want it. And those that want it are finding it. You know, I had a call, um, I had a session with a sex worker from uh, across the pond last week, asking questions, a seeker, brand new, asking questions. She said, I think I want to be a healer. And, you know, I thought about it later. I thought, yeah, you know, I can see how somebody that's a true healer could get mixed up in that. I could see how that could happen. Mm -hmm. And she is reaching out for help. And I believe she's going to be absolutely transformed. That's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, did, did they ever give you like, I know there's no time outside of this third dimension, right? But like people like to ask that question. People are always asking me, when are we going to shift, bro? Like when's ascension going to happen? i have read so-and-so on Twitter and I follow you and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, there's no time outside of this dimension. You know I mean? And, I, and again, I always say that consciousness, God is consciousness. God is right. Yes. Uh-huh. Talking Hawkins, God there's no is or I, it's God is. But I mean, you know, yes. for people to truly understand what is God, it's literally consciousness. And it's, as you were talking about, you know, Jesus, Yeshua, whatever he was, the Christos. You know, he was he spoke, one of us. Exactly. But he That's spoke. All. Yeah, exactly. But he's right. He was a man, right? He, he, he spoke as, you know, the one, the one tr- teaching that I always default to with him is, the kingdom of heaven is within you, right? Sure. And so he's he's essentially telling you, and then you, you know anything I can do, you can do better. Exactly. Um, you know all these things, but the reality is is that, and again, then the dark side co opted all of the teachings, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it's, it's crazy. We we don't have to get into our uh, religious uh, soliloquies, you know, to save from YouTube striking us or from people coming after me. You don't believe that, Jay? You're a Christian, you know. But the the reality is is that. All of us have access to God, a.k.a. divinity, a.k.a. our higher self, a.k.a. the Christ of our own conscious, a.k.a. the kingdom of heaven within us, but only when we learn to tap into it, right? And again, you have to understand that it's an inside job. There's no external force coming to save anyone. It's not Trump. It's not, you know, Jesus and an army on white horses. You know, it's not some God with a chalice you know, with gold that Hollywood portrays or, you know, Thanos and the Avengers. I mean, they're constantly, as you know, Angie, putting external figures out there, again, out there, not in here, out there. That's to right. Take people's minds away and hearts more so than, than minds away from that. The reality that is each one of us, as Jesus, Yeshua said, are our own saviors. Everyone wants an external savior. And until you don't 
look towards the external saviors. Again, your politician, right? Your priest, the police, your boss. I mean, you're the athlete, the celebrity entertainer. I mean, people externalize power. Right, exactly. And it's like until you stop externalizing and realize that you are the divine creator, that you have the power, you can connect to the angelic realms internally by doing these things. It seems like, you know, as you and I were talking off the air, people can't, they can't raise their frequency. They stay stuck down here attached to the idea that somebody is coming to save them. That's not them. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And you know, there, there's so much power available to us. We are unlimited beings. We are truly creating everything in our environment in every moment of every day. The thing is, is getting a hold of, you know, when, when we're creating the shitty stuff that we don't yeah. want, yeah. admitting the truth. Okay, I created this for some reason why, and, yeah. and owning it, right? And then finding the, the point of transformation in it. But all, all energy, you know, Albert Einstein said everything is energy. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and all energy can be converted. Right, transmuted. It, yeah, right. absolutely. And so, you know, when I when I say to someone, uh, you know, when six years ago, when I met my new partner, um, the law of attraction was new to me. And he would say to me, you know, Angie, I can't be in a relationship with anybody who doesn't believe they create their own reality. He said that to you? Oh, yeah. Hundreds of times. Dude, that, you got an amazing He's, Dude. he's freaking amazing. He is amazing. He's awesome. That's what I say to people. <laughs> amazing. And, you know, he he um, has been a meditator for almost yeah. 50, 50 years now. Yeah. That's he amazing. Is, he walks the walk, talks so to when God. He, I got to ask you, though, because this is, this is must listen to you two. Yeah. When he first told you that, coming from the background that you had, and I want you to share as much as you want. Sure. You know, because obviously you were raised in fundamental Christian. I was raised in fundamental Catholic. You know, neither of them lead anybody anywhere other than a confusion. But um, what did you think when he said that to you? Like at that moment, not where you are now, obviously, because now you know it's true. But like, what were you? Were you in resistance to it or was it just kind of, wow, this is interesting. I need to oh, look sure, into it. Sure, because I wanted him to take responsibility for not being perfect and making me perfectly <laughs> happy. Right? <laughs> Isn't that you know? amazing? How yeah. everybody is taught that kind of nonsense and in this listen, society. He was vigilant. He would not allow me to blame him for anything. Even when he would do crappy things, even when he was really blowing it and he knew it. Yeah. But he would not allow me, my ego, to, he was not going to engage my ego. He was not going to allow me to blame him. He was not going to allow me to play the victim. Yeah. He... I mean, he was dead stopping my victim game, you know, yeah. at every turn. And he That's was awesome. so vigilant and doing it out of love and out of awareness. And, and, and it was painful because it was so intense. That's what everybody needs, though. I mean, everyone needs a mentor or someone. He was hardcore, man. And teach us that we are accountable. We are personally responsible for everything that happens to us. My 13 year old daughter, I, I mean, I, you know, my wife doesn't like the words I use, but I use them because I feel like they're very powerful and emphasize. I always say, Gabby, it's your fault. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even when it's not your fault, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you start thinking it's your fault, you will become personally accountable for everything that happens to you in your life. Because as you and right. I know, you are ultimately, you still choose. We have, this is a free will zone. Yeah. You can choose whether or not you want to be a victim or not. And so many people, Angie, as we were talking off the air, are coached and coerced <laughs> through social media. Right. You deserve it. It's not your fault. <laughs> well, since we're on that page, I'll, this is my little thing that I keep handy for my, Beautiful. my sessions. You know what keeps us stuck in 3D is this little game we play of yes. running around this triangle. I love and that. We run around and around and around the triangle. And this is what keeps us caught in the BS. So amazing. So we're either rescuing, we're persecuting, or we're playing the victim. And so if we really buy into the law of attraction, uh, 
and we believe that we're creating our real, own reality, then then that you know X's out this thing. We're not a victim. We can't be a victim. We are the creator. And yeah. so, you know, Chuck was so faithful to constantly call me on any time I was playing the victim. And, you know, as a mom, mm-hmm. and especially as a Christian mom, uh, and as a You're good, taught to be a victim. As a good Southern woman, well, first of all, what I, the main thing I was entrained to do above all other things <laughs> is to rescue. How, oh, I've got the Great Commission. I have to save everybody on the planet with the good news. What the a great trip. commission. Yes, unbelievable, and, man. And so that, and then, and then rescuing by, you know, I've got to be the good wife, the good mom, the good daughter. Um, Judah recently was talking to me, you know, Judah doesn't pull any punches either, but there's so much love in emanating yeah. from it. Yeah. There's yeah. so much love that you, you, Afterwards, you have to kind of laugh and say, oh, my gosh, I just got totally disciplined by Judah. But it doesn't feel like discipline because there's so much love in it. Yes. But, you know, Judah said to me, Ange, you've got three, three pillars holding up your ego. And if you can knock over those three pillars, you're going to be an enlightened being. You're going to be completely free. And I was thinking, wow, what, what are they going to be? Are they going to be pride or what are they going to be? And you know what Judah said? Good wife, good daughter, good mother. Right. right. So attached to those roles. Right. So you're, you're totally, attached. I mean, to those like roles. even Hollywood teaches women from four through Disney. Mm-hmm. It's all embodying specific roles that literally have nothing to do with anything. But you're brainwashed. And, and, and I mean, think of all the women that are like, I'm of a loyal, faithful, good wife. That's what all I have to do. I have to be attentive to my husband's needs, cook my kids dinner. I mean, you know, I was thinking about what you were saying that with those three, with the persecutor, you know, that triangle, that's amazing, by the way, I'm going to use that. Um, but think about how women all after that then also are programmed to worry. Oh yeah. About all of those things. Monica, my wife's mom, you know, uh, was from Culiacana Ranch in Mexico and, you know, the conquistadors. You want to talk about like enslaving an entire generation of people from like thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. I mean, nobody knows the timelines, but she told Monica and her other sister when they were kids, she would say this, Monica, if you care, you worry. Imagine putting that into the <laughs> minds of your daughters. And then think about Catholics and Christians, the whole planetary wide. If you're a good daughter, a good wife, a good mom, you worry. Worry yourself to cancer and disease and early Mm -hmm. death. Well, you know, and let's go back a few generations. You know, like my grandmother's uh, beautiful soul, very loving, very caring. She was the consummate rescuer, caretaker of her children, of her neighbors, of her aging aunts, and, you know, everybody in the community. And, you know, back then, if you wanted to to be anything besides a caretaker, you had to squash that. And so she was that first generation on Valium. Wow. You know, I, I never knew my grandmother sober. She was always on pills. But uh, mommy's little helper, they called it. Wow. You know, mommy, think about that. Mommy's little helper. Mommy's little helper. Because Valium. mommy's got to fucking save the whole world. Right. Dude. Mommy's got to love everybody no matter what. Mommy can't be angry. Mommy can't have any needs of her own. Mommy can't have a dream. No. Mommy can't be creative. No. Mommy no. can't be bigger, you know, and and you know, if you if you if you believe in reincarnation, you know, you you understand that your your soul, your higher dimensional self has been many Exactly. Many things. Well, hold on, hold on, been, there's no on this show, there's no believing in reincarnation. There's knowing Knowing. Okay, great. I love it. You know, because what I know now is I understand that I've been many multitudes of, of things to many people. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I deal with some really precious uh, women that are involved in the Judah family and they don't want to have kids and they are shamed for that. They're being shamed by people for not wanting to be moms. Yeah. No, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, I mean, a hundred percent. I mean, look, this is so deep. We're, we're talking about really amazing things. I mean, I know this is diverging, but who cares? Cause this is the kind of stuff that people really want to listen to. I mean, 
what has been done? Let's just talk about America, right? Because we know it's in Europe too. It's in, in all Western first world cultures. And that's what's funny, right? Think about the brainwashing that you and I have had through college and high school and grade school that, you know, where I'm at right now or any place like in Latin America or, you know, again, call them third or fourth world countries where the people have kept the original spiritual teachings. They're not as enslaved and brainwashed as the first world, right? And so we've been taught and brainwashed to think that these people are backward savages when in fact they're the most spiritual people. Yeah, they don't have the most technolog technological things that we have in the quote unquote West, but that doesn't mean anything because they're less contaminated by the dark side, which is what, you know, pushes the technology and the materialism and all of the stuff that we have. And so it's like, you start thinking about like how they enslave the mind of women. I mean, I'm reading this amazing book right now. I won't get into it because right, I don't want to, you know, derail rabbit hole the podcast, but it talks about the divine goddess feminine energy and how it was crushed and suppressed to allow the, you know, masculine patri the, you know, patriarchy to fight and wage wars and kill and do all of this shit that's happened, you know, since Yeshua was supposedly around 2000 years ago and all of this world in where we find ourselves right now, you know, suppressed, depressed, screwed up is due to the war and the bloodshed. And again, the patriarchy and then men losing touch with their femininity, right? The twin flame. So men have suppressed their feeling, their emotion, their femininity, the creator goddess power. And women have had to sit back and not have any power as you were just talking about and be the good wife, the good mom, you know what I mean? So it's like now here we are, it's 2023 and energy, as you said at the beginning of the show is the key and energy is now starting to come to rise to literally rise to the top Yes, and you can't stop it. And if you attempt to stop it living in the past or living in the pat the patriarchy mindset of the last 2000 years, you know, the brainwash, you're going down, you're going nuts. You can't even stand the energy that's coming from, you know, the divine uh, aspects of the world, because again, the energy is shifting now on planet and we are going back to a twin flame reality where, you know, the goddess energy is going to be the power energy. I mean, look, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, Angie, to realize that women have always held the power. I mean, again, I'm not getting into a debate about men and women and the roles. We all have you know, equal but opposite energies, but women bring life in. They are the creative force. So it's like to think that the inversion of this place has been going on for 2,000 years where women had no rights, men were the rulers because they were physically stronger. The whole thing is broken. And again, yeah. the church supported all of this. Yeah. Think and about then, that. Yeah. And then, you know, and then there's still, we've got so many frontiers still to reclaim. Like even in, in yeah. our circles where you and I run, where we're more awakened, we can still have this kind of... Um, warlike, um, uh, aggressive attitude about the ego, like amputate that that's ego. Spiritual bypass. <laughs> yeah. Literally, you know, instead, you of, instead of, Oh, you know, it's like when you get in the presence of love, your ego just drops, 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 exactly. drops, drops, because this is, you know, one of the things Judah emphasizes so much is experience. Let's give people an experience. People, if if one, if each person had one person, or that really truly loved them through and through, top to bottom, no matter what, at all times, unconditionally, they would instantly be changed. They would drop their egoic defenses. They would let go of the the ideas and conditioning that weren't serving them anymore. They would be transformed. Yeah. You know, and that's what Judah's done for me. The this big, huge presence that comes in is so loving that you're willing to lay down your egoic defenses. You're willing to let it go. Um, you know, the ego. A lot of times, I think of it. Um, this is a more soft and feminine way of thinking about it. It's like a cocoon for a butterfly that's forming. You know, a cocoon has its purpose, and but then there's a time that it's time to shed it. Right. And so 
you know, that's another way of looking, you know, we're talking about the world and all the things that's going on. Another way to look at it is, is this, um, there is a transformation happening for so many people. I had a dream recently, Judah gave me a really powerful dream. I saw these massive cocoons hanging from trees everywhere in a field and they were huge and they were humans in them. I could see the human forms in them and they were glowing with golden white light. Amazing. And Judah showed me these are the people that that you and I, that uh, us light workers are working with right now. Yeah. They are in these cocoons. Their ego is dying away. They're going to emerge as their new, high, highly de- evolved, enlightened selves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it is a process that is underway, and it is happening rapidly. It is. There's some days, honestly, Angie, I feel that we could shift tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you feel the divine energy, you feel the creation, you feel time. I know you know this, but people like us in the last two years, maybe really last year and a half, time has sped up. I mean, that's not even debatable at this point. Mm-hmm. Again, mm-hmm. It's because of this energy that's coming in. You know, the the uh, Newtonian people, the third dimensional physicists will say, it's oh, it's from the Oort cloud. But, you know, obviously higher dimensional quantum people like us will say, oh, no, it's the central spiritual sun. And this is what happens when the energy is r- ripe to shift the consciousness frequency of the planet. But, you know, however you want to think of it, birthing a new earth, that's exactly what's happening. And there are entities and, 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 uh, and, and extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings that are all here observing. And they've been here, obviously, all the time, but they were much more, you know, the, the veil wasn't as thin as it is now. But, like, you can see things. Like, when I was just driving in Florida... Uh, on Monday, coming back from Venice, I was down looking at houses in Venice. The I, I mean, I was looking in the sky and I was entranced at the divine heavenly energy that you see in the cloud formations. And it's almost like, and I'm sure this is what it is. I mean, I've always kind of had this intuition, um, this knowing that that it's it's them, and they 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 cloud themselves with clouds. You know what I mean? But like, if you really like look into it and you connect with it, it's like you can feel their love and you can feel their attention and you can feel like they're like you were saying earlier, like just this, they have this great fond energy and they care so much about us and they want to see a shift and they want to see this third dimensional veil ripped away for good. And so you really can't connect to this, but again, you know, people are listening to the show and again, I, I've, I'm full blown woo now. So nobody, nobody that really truly listens to me cares that how I said it. Maybe I have some newbies that, you know, came in because they follow me for peptides and they're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? But <laughs> the, the reality is, is that yes, it is here. Mm-hmm. The shift is ongoing. Not everybody experiences it. Not everybody feels it, right? Because again, everything is vibration. It's a state of being, it's energy. You know, if you're down here, as you were saying, as in victimhood, the vibration of victimhood, that's what I like to call it, then yeah, you don't feel any of this. But if you're not, and you're above the line of integrity, and you're in that green, you know, chakra field, and maybe even into the blue sometimes, Mm -hmm. as you said, this podcast right now is we're definitely in the blue green. Yeah. I mean, but that's, how do you say it? You you said Judah likes to say it's feeling, it's emotion. The key to the higher realms, if that's well, how we want to describe it, you know, or, or describe it is through feeling. It's it's an experience. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's an experience. Experiencing it. Yes. It goes beyond talk. It goes yeah. into an experience. And sometimes you can't describe the experience. No. I mean, Jay, There's no I, word. I have some days, I have some days if I'll really <laughs> unplug from things and just meditate that I get so caught up in bliss that I I'm, I'm literally, if, if you didn't know me, if you didn't know what was going on, you would think I was on some kind of pill <laughs> or drunk or something. <clears throat> Sometimes I can I literally have to drag my legs, you know, through the house. I can barely hold myself up there. There are times I'm a stay in such a, a state of bliss that I can't describe it. There's no words for it. And then three days later, you're like, what happened to the bliss? <laughs> But you know what? Every time, one of these the things that's so cool about angels is they can bump up our emotional that's state. Right. Think about this like a, a set point on your thermostat. Maybe you'd like it at 70 sure. or 74. 68, whatever you, 68. Whatever you like, yeah. So we all have these emotional set points. Well, 
you know, before my awakening, my emotional set point was sad and depressed, sad, repressed and depressed. That was my emotional set point. I might get a new job. I might do something fun, uh, make a new album, uh, go on a trip, do something really exciting. And, and my, my temp might go up for a while, but I would migrate back again down to sad. That was where, that was my emotional set point. Yeah. But as we get into this, when we start meditating, if we, if we are seriously committed, no matter what, we're going to overcome the obstacles and keep doing it. We can begin bumping up our emotional set point. And we, when we keep staying in the presence of high vibe people and doing work like this, you know, one of my strategies, um, once I went was just to read everything I could by enlightened beings. Yeah. I, I was got, not going to get it secondhand information. I was going to go straight, get it from the horse's mouth, from the enlightened beings, and, and, and it would lift my vibration. And so over time, our emotional set point can be moved up into those green and blue and even higher levels. And we can start living in that place and get stabilized in that field, which is one of the reasons why I love FLFE, right? Because they're providing us with that 500 level of unconditional love, they're stabilizing our energetic field so we can get the work done of clearing out the lower vibe stuff. That's exactly right. The old historical yuck that we're just sick of and it, and it's not serving us anymore. Just clearing it out. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Amazing. Um, I have so many things. I mean, I, so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm so like high from the beginning, you know, uh-huh. yeah. not, not, not from a, a, a personal, like thankful, you know, I mean, yes, I'm grateful and thankful, but like, it was more of an assurance of like a, a fir- affirmation that I knew, which is mm-hmm. making me much more excited and happy, you know, that I, like you am, rolling with the angelic team most of the time. I mean, again, I don't want to say that from an egoic standpoint, but again, you and me and people like us, we're serving in what we do, right? Like we're creating stuff that right. serves other people. Um, let, let me ask you, let, let, let's talk about 3D, 4D and 5D though. Okay. It, is one of, it is one of the points and you, you do an amazing job um, with your website and talking about true you and all this. And I, and I'll give, you know, my, awareness, knowing of what I see as the dimensions. And again, you know, I'm like you, I've read everything. Um, you know, I like, um, Maureen St. Germain, you know, she talks a lot about moving into 4d and moving out of 5d. She likes to talk about how 4d is kind of the way station, right? Mm -hmm. 5d is the higher consciousness and 3d is where, you know, we're here as matter realm beings, right? Like Angie and Jay, you know, we're these meat sickles, Mm-hmm. Right. That's not who we are. We're energy in these bodies. Right. Again, mm-hmm. we're here for spiritual evolution and growth as energy in physical bodies. And so that's why, you know, I always tell people uh, and why my message is so much about and I know yours is, too. But, you know, why why I believe slash know that, you know, having a healthy avatar body is the ultimate, you know, arbiter of energetic transformation. Right. Because look, Absolutely. People don't understand this, and I haven't actually done a really good job of disseminating this on my podcast up until now, and you're the perfect person to talk about this, but if you're obese, and again, this is not a condemnation or a judgment, but but biologically and spiritually and energetically, if you are an obese person, you are highly inflamed cellularly, right? So what that means is, and, and again, people don't understand this because they don't really understand the human avatar body at the level that a lot of people that you know are in the health space do. But you are feeling pain twenty four seven as an obese human being. Mm-hmm. Like literally, a, an obese person looks in the mirror in the morning, and regardless of what they see back, and you know, you can argue that they have you know all these psychological things because they don't see what you and I see. 
And so they go on and they continue to exist like that. But what, what, regardless of what they see, they feel pain. Mm -hmm. They feel nonstop, 24 seven suffering in some form or another, because again, Mm -hmm. biologically, their body is experiencing cytokine storms Mm -hmm. throughout Mm -hmm. their cellular networks at all times, because their body is a hot mess. You know, as I like to say, a dumpster fire, you know, of inflammation. Mm-hmm. Which obviously, as you know, leads to eventually heart attack, disease, cancer, whatever. One of the diseases of aging, and people die, right? And again, no one dies. The physical body dies. Your energy will just go on and you know jettison to wherever the next experience is, whether it's reincarnation on Earth or another dimension or another planet or another realm or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. But I like to explain it in that way, Inch, because I want people to understand that, like, you cannot connect to quote unquote, the realms of the angelics or higher dimensional Mm -hmm. awares until you're not suffering at that capacity because there's no energy for you to like, you know, other than the suffering and the pain Mm -hmm. to receive or to accept, you know? And again, I know that people are going to get mad when they say, oh, so you're going to say, Jay, that obese people aren't aren't spiritual. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when you're in abject pain, 24 yeah. seven, you don't have the energy or the frequency to truly connect to divinity like a person who isn't obese does, right? Because there's more yeah. spiritual time slash room slash mm-hmm. essence to connect with when you're not suffering. Yeah. Well, if if you want to, we can let Judah weigh in on diet. Do, please. Want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, yes, we'd love to talk about this, dear. Yes, you are right. There are people who are in a lot of pain. They are in emotional, mental, and physical pain when they look in the mirror and there's so much weight. This weight that they carry is is indicative. It is a a sign or or, uh, a symbol of the weight on their soul. Yeah. The heaviness on their heart. It is heartbreaking. They are heartbroken and they have added on layers in order to protect the heart. And and the more layers there are there, and then the more pain, and it is a vicious cycle. Now let us talk about diet here for a while. We want to tell you about what this vessel needed to do in order to maintain, to live in, to stabilize and normalize very high vibrational states like the one that we are bringing now. You see, there was changes that needed to happen in her body. When we first came and knocked on the door of her life, we crashed her party. Uh, We did heal her body instantly of the remnants of autonomic uh, diseases that were related to her experience with COVID. You see, there were many, many, many uh, because of this uh, uh, unfortunate series of events who stepped over into autonomic diseases because their body was, there was so much threat, there was so much of a vibration of fear that the body uh, 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 got stuck in fight or flight, you see. And this caused an an outbreak. You will see the next pandemic. It is already underway. It has just not been brought into consciousness. Is one of autonomic diseases such as Hashimoto's and and others, Mm -hmm. Lyme's and so on. And and the whole plethora with many names, but they are all the same. They are a disease of, of the body being stuck in fight or flight. And, and so there is a need for those, uh, we would say, like this vessel's husband in acupuncture who can reset the body into a, a, a state of growth and repair. This is paramount. You cannot heal someone's body if they are stuck in a fight or flight syndrome. Yes. They must come up into that green uh, section that you are referring to of neutrality, a reset, like a turning off of a device and a restarting back into growth and repair. Now, we want to talk specifically about how, as you said, someone stuck in in this difficult place of inflammation cannot begin to come up into higher uh, elevated spiritual experiences. You are pointing to the importance of caring for the body first because the body has to be able to maintain 
the, these extremely enormous amounts of power that we want to bring, we want to bring enormous amounts of miracle working power through the physical body. We want the body to be a conduit for this high level energy, but the body must be prepared for it. So here are some of the secrets that we gave to this vessel. A high vibrational diet is of the most importance, of the most importance. You cannot consume animals that have been uh, 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 diseased, right. uh, uh, cruelly and unthinkingly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uncared for, injected with chemicals and tormented not allowed to live a natural life. If you consume those animals, you are consuming the death, the, the, the wickedness that those animals experience, and you've taken that energy into your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, when this vessel began to encounter us, she was still eating meat. We are not saying we are against eating meat. Listen carefully. There are animals are very willing to lovingly sacrifice their lives for humans. Mm -hmm. And that is a part of their evolution. And their desire is to nourish the body. But it is for humans to to be mindful that they not eat animals that are are cruelly mm, 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 raised and slaughtered. Uh, and and dishonored, we would say dishonored, you see. And so we we don't uh, uh, frown on you eating animals which are are raised as God intended, as nature intended. Back to that. So she would sometimes consume chicken. And later she would find herself feeling extraordinarily anxious, un- uncannily anxious, out of character. And she began to make the correlation. She had ingested this fear energy and the energy was in her body and it was impacting her. Now, we will say we are going to give a caveat here. She is extraordinarily sensitive because of the sort of work that she is doing, you see. So we're not saying this is for everyone, but this is we're talking about people that really want to go high vibe here and and go move towards enlightenment. That is who we're speaking to here. So for her, we asked her that she only eat fruits and vegetables grown in the sun. In full view of the sun, not underground, in full view of the sun, and nuts and seeds grown in full view of the sun, having absorbed so much white light energy from this grand central sun that you speak of, eating them as as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is the mainstay of her diet. If you want to be dead spiritually, eat dead food. (laughs) If you want to be fear riddled, eat fear riddled animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you want to 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 have low energy, eat foods that are 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 processed, packaged, and 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 shipped on the backs of the poor. But if you want to be full of life full of life, eat food that is grown with love and gratitude and honor for the earth and give your thanks and be happy to pay a fair and even even, uh, an extravagant price in your gratitude and thanksgiving and eat foods as much as you can while they're still warm from the sun even. Mm -hmm. You just revealed so much amazing things there's so much for me to unpack it's like an entire new podcast to just talk about what you said i'll, I'll, I'll high level summarize <clears throat> which is even interesting and unique to me but thinking of like obese people carrying all the inflammation all the layers mm. those are literally spiritual yes uh, absolutely incapacity slash trauma slash mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um What's the word? Amputations Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from previous lifetimes that they have carried over. And you're right. It literally is a weight, literally and figuratively, on their soul. Yes. 
And so they can't, and I think about my mom, you know, God rest her, God rest her now that she's out of the suffering that she was in for so long. But I think of her life and I think of all of the things that she had to endure and how she just literally allowed it to just accumulate Mm -hmm. in skin folds and body fat and inflammation. And then I think about like, well, God, what was she also connected to in past lives and stuff like that? That was, that was very, very spiritually in tune and attuning to me thinking about like, wow. So that's really what, when you see a person like that, they are suffering. They are at such a deep soul level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Spiritual suffering or trauma, traumas or amputations that they've been suffered have just layered upon layered upon layered them. Yeah. And if you, if it's okay, let's, if you want, we can give your, anybody listening who's struggling with this, we can give them a spiritual uh, hit. Yes. Get rid of this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is what we want to do. If, if that is you, if you are one of these who, who identified, you said, yes, I'm suffering under a weight of, of physical weight. And this is me. It's me. I'm hurting. I'm under this weight. We're going to right now go in, in the realm of the spirit. We extract the original wounding which caused you to begin to layer on this weight, whatever the wound is, whether it's in this life or in a past life. Right now, we extract the very seed, the very root of it in all realms of time and space. Mm -hmm. And every lie, subconscious and conscious lie that you believe about yourself as a result of the original wound We eradicate it and pull it up by the root now so that you are now free, now free, now free to begin to drop this weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. So one of the things that Judah has asked is whenever we find a spiritual root of a pain or trauma with someone, to just go ahead and say that we just set the intention that they're going to be free in all realms of time and space. You see, people can go to a therapist or um, a fitness coach or or, or um, a, psych- a psychologist, whoever they're working with, very skilled people with the very best of intentions. But if 75 to 80% of the issue is a past life issue. Can't help them. Yep. Right. And so it has to be done in a spiritual realm. And so the way you can do that, even as you're coaching people, is you just say in all realms of time and space. So if you're working with them in the present moment to lose weight, you just set that intention in your heart in all realms of time and space. This person's going to drop the, the weight, the spiritual weight, the things that are holding them back, the ideas, the concepts, the beliefs, the, the subconscious pain that's holding them back, that's manifesting in the physical 3D as weight, they're going to drop it, all of it, in all realms of time and space. That's amazing. I just wrote that down. Yeah. And that's and I believe, I have faith for you. Yes, we want to say to you, Jay, when you work with someone in the physical 3D realm around their health and fitness, you can set that intention with them that the very core wound whether it is in this life or in past lives, plural, can be eradicated through your 3D work in the physical realm. You can set that intention, which you're masterful at, we would say, setting intentions. It's beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. So in all realms, I'll, I'll repeat it back, in all realms of time and space, you, we, us, withdraw the root core wound and eradicate it for good. Yes. So I'll give you a metaphor to help you. Um, Judah has used this metaphor with me a lot. So if you imagine an, uh, a seed, let's say for an oak tree, when that seed goes into the ground and dies, the, the hull or the husk of the, the seed disappears into what then becomes a tree, right? So the seed is no longer a seed, it's a tree. So if you imagine, imagine a really deep wound, like I don't know what it was for your mom. Um, who knows? Maybe it was something past life. Maybe it was some uh, a childhood abuse or trauma. That seed, and, and see, this is where it's so important as parents, the culture 
we have to watch over our children because these seeds go into them when they're very young, yes. this conditioning. And there may not be fruit from it for 10, 20, 30 years. But when that oak tree is full grown, it's very hard to cut that thing down. You know what I'm saying? When we've got bad fruits of, of hurt, pain, judgment, pride, arrogance, control, rescuing, victimization, those are little tiny, tiny, tiny seeds that get planted in children's hearts. But by the time 10, 20, 30 years go by, 40 years go by, and it's a, grown into a massive oak tree that overshadows everything in their life. And it's extraordinarily difficult to cut it down at that point. And, you know, a lot of people, once they get to 40 or 50, if, if they haven't changed by then, there's not a lot of hope for them. Uh, it takes a real miracle. It takes a real miracle to transform them. So, you know, the fruit, if you've got the fruit, you've got the root. That's what Judah always says. That's right. If you got the fruit, you got the root. So, you know, you can say, well, I, I don't have this problem or that problem or the other. But if there's crap going on in your life, there's a root somewhere. Right. Yep. And so we don't have, you know, what Ju Judah, we are all out shortcuts, my dear, because you see, sometimes people do have many lifetimes worth of baggage and there is an ascension happening and there is an awakening and it is speeding up and there is momentum. And so we need all the shortcuts we can get. Right. So you don't have time. I don't, this vessel does not have time to spend 20 or 30 years in a therapist office. <laughs> Okay, we need shortcuts. <laughs> so let's just go right back to the original seed and let angels uh, pull it up, extract it with supernatural power. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that. If you, if you got the root, you, if you got the fruit, you got the root. So back to what you were just saying, though, about because that's also fascinating and interesting about, you know, if you're, if you haven't figured this out by the time you're 40, maybe even into 50, because I figured this out when I was 42. Yeah. So I'm, t it's 10 years later. So my spiritual awakening growth, you know, uh, ride path, whatever you want to call it has massively evolved over the last 10 years. And it also had to do with meeting my, my current wife, Monica, you know, she was my spiritual mentor. I mean, I was always a seeker. But, you know, I was more of the, uh, you know, the, I was more stuck in figuring out who the bad guys were rather than like spiritually sending myself. You know what I mean? It was like, who, 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 who can I blame? You know, it goes back to your triangle thing. Um, but so, so what happens then? Maybe a question for Judah or maybe you just answer it because you've answered it a thousand times already. But what happens to the people who don't make it by that time? It's just another go round and they get another chance the next time back or whatever. Sure, sure. I mean, what it, you know, what it takes, I woke up about the same time you did. Yeah. And, and my miracle came through my partner, who's an acupuncturist. Yeah. And I would go and lay on the acupuncture table and get my treatment. And, um, and I would go into a state of bliss. And, and the only thing that I had ever experienced in my life that was remotely similar was in really high times of corporate worship, of really expressive, a buoyant worship with thousands of people, I had had that feeling. Well, I was having that feeling on an acupuncture table with needles in me all alone in the room. I, I didn't understand what, what was going on, you see. That was a part of my awakening. But you see, Chuck had the patience and the discipline and the understanding to see me through. And like, you know, we were talking about earlier to, to hold my feet to the fire, to the truth of the fact that I was creating my own reality. And he, I cannot tell you, Jay, how many times I had my bags packed and in the car ready to leave him because my ego was, yeah, was kicking up such a fuss, you know. And Who are you to tell me I create my own reality? It was so painful. It was right. so painful. But he could let me feel all the, you know, 
one of the things that unfortunately my religious training taught me was to repress, to be a good girl, to be loving, to be kind, not to be angry. There was so much repression. You're saying what religion has done to people. And repression turns into disease in the body. Oh, absolutely. Besides it's part of the whole people. program. It, it, you know, again, whoever, again, maybe ask Judah, who, who is the dark side before the show's over? If, if, if they want to share who the dark side is, and I know who the dark side is. It's literally us, right? It's like yeah. us choosing to be, quote unquote, part of the family of dark and not the family of light. It's, it's, we're, we're all evolving each other, right? Because the dark side is like teaching the light side like what not to do. And the light side is like showing the dark side that it's better over here. So yeah. it's like we're all playing a game to evolve each other, but it's just, it's fascinating. But yeah, I mean, religion has hijacked the masses for thousands of years. I mean, it is. And again, to tell people like, you know, like your dad or my dad or, you know, any pe people who are brought up in the quote unquote Abrahamic teachings, what we say, I mean, we're considered voodoo witch doctors or, you know, <laughs> you know, crazy new age, you know, right. witches or whatever they want to call us. But like, I mean, as we were saying off the air, Ange, I mean, like, it really is the key to shifting the vibrational frequency of this planet for people to realize that they can walk away from their religious teachings because religion and spirituality are not the same. They're That's not right. even they're not even remotely equal. That's right. But people have to get brave and have to get courageous and have to be strong enough to be like, hey, I don't need to go to a temple or a church or a mosque or a house right. of worship to find God. God is within me. I can access God whenever I want. Yeah. I mean, when I, you know, when I met Chuck, I broke ranks with the church. I mean, I, I left my community that I was a school teacher. I'd been in that community for 20 years. Um, I was very high profile in my church. You know, sure. I was singing for thousands, leading worship and singing for thousands of people every weekend. I, I was, I, I had, the church was very gracious to me. They embraced and made use of my gifts and talents and gave me a platform. Um, and, and so I can't, I, to the degree that they were able to, they were, they were good to me, Sure. but I knew that I had to get out. I mean, I was like, when I broke, broke free and I got out, I felt like Harriet Tubman running in the night. I was yeah. not, I was not looking back, you know, and my, you have to, you yeah. have to, you, you do. I mean, you, for me, I had to completely sever. The Detach. Yeah. yeah. But it is, look, it, it is true. And again, I know that we're going to offend people, but it's a beautiful conversation. It is a form of mind control. It is cult. It's cultistic. It's uh, group think, uh, you know, very powerful constructs of, of entrainment. I mean, again, when we talk about energy, we talk about resonance and we talk about dissonance. Mm -hmm. When you get a bunch of people together, singing, offering, worshiping, yes. giving praise, speaking words that have been inverted, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. saying things that they don't even actually understand what they're saying. I mean, again, you are literally giving praise energy to non-divine beings. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, this, this is very deep. I know you know these kind of things. Yeah. I, and, I, and again, I don't want to bring this kind of stuff up on this podcast because I don't want to get this channel <laughs> or get the show deleted. <laughs> but like, People don't actually know who they're speaking to. They don't even know what the word amen means. I'll just leave it at that, right? And it's like you don't have any concept of what you're saying. You think you do because you've been taught this and your parents were taught this and your parents were taught this, but this is not what it actually seems to be. Mm -hmm. and well, so it's crazy to think that, but it's all true. And again, it's, it's just so hard for people in that realm to accept. Yeah. It, you know, it makes me think of a story, um, by Osho, who was my, my sweet. Oh, Osho is amazing. I have all his books literally to well, my right. Well, see, Chuck, my partner is he's really <laughs> the hero in my story because he was, he lived, uh, I think it was five years with Osho. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, it reminds me of a story, you know, about Osho's childhood and his upbringing. He was raised by his grandparents and his grandmother had had um, a, a rule of strict silence in the house, strict silence. And Osho was allowed to do whatever he wanted. He was a little wild child. He ran around and did 
anything he wanted to do, and all the household servants were instructed to let him be. Yeah. And he spent time in nature, roaming, and his grandfather, who was also very powerful in his life, um, he would go once a week to his worship, whatever his formal community worship was, and Osha would want to go with him. And his grandfather would say, no, no. And he would forbid him to he follow didn't want his him. mind to be clouded by it. He, you know. And both of them for, forbid anyone to indoctrinate him in it's any amazing. way. And he's such a beautiful example of if you allow a child to be free. See, you know, one of the, the oh, Judah wants to talk about this. Here we okay. go. Okay. Yes. Why? This is what we want to say about children, dear. You see, many of you are 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 giving birth to children that are highly enlightened souls. They are coming to the earth for a very specific time and specific purpose. They are thrilled and excited to see this transformation of human consciousness. And so you, you must understand that many of these children are by far and away so much wiser than their parents. Okay, so parents, you must be mindful. We want to say to parents, you don't know it all. You don't know it all. <laughs> <laughs> are you using therapeutic peptides are you a new user maybe an advanced user maybe you're considering starting peptides highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my pdf and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides It's so true. I mean, like I, I think about my dad in that, you know, and like, and again, I'm, I don't want to, you know, they're, they're spiritual babes, you know, and again, see, when we talk about this, like uh, levels of consciousness and awareness and everything that Judah just said resonates so deeply with me, like you have to get to a place of knowing that you chose your parents, mm -hmm. you know, your parents are, they don't have control over you. You know, and you think you you and I were raised by people who thought they had control over us. You know what I mean? Like, I'm your father, or I'm your mother, and you do what I say, and all these things. It's like you get to a level of spiritual awareness, and like, again, all you really realize is, is that, you know, as the parent, your child is an independent, free-thinking, creative, powerful, potential ascended master, you know, archangel coming back in human form, and you have to let them be who they're going to That's be. Right. You have no control over them. You can't choose – to what they're going to do or make them do this or make them do that. Sure. You can lead from the front. You can put a roof over their head. You can put food on the table for them. You can provide for them, but you don't control them. And it's, it's so interesting to think what you just said or what Judah just said. It's, I, I, I see you guys as synonymous now, but, um, Man, parents do have to get to that awareness. Yeah, and one of the things Judah said early on is in the next three generations, it's going to be uh, – and the, the outliers will be children who don't have clairvoyant, psychic, right. clairaudient right. gifts. So, you know, within the next three generations, uh, the vast majority of peop of these children are going to be really operative in their gifts and high level and high conscious. And these kids are throwing off, you yeah. know, and Chuck and I, we, we get together, we have live Juna, Judah sessions here in Charlotte, and we have a lot young, really young people coming and they are they're on it and they're in it and they are beginning to channel. I, I find, I find it, 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 it's, it's, it's fascinating because the young, so they're, they're definitely the exception rather than the rule, but the ones that are on it are like, whoa, it's like listening to ascended master. I mean, I've seen some of them. I've met some of these kids. Um, but as you know, you know, it, you know, the, the, the ones that aren't, you know, who are manipulated by technology and are like ready to be plugged into the metaverse, you know, they get all the the, uh, the hoorah and the support and everything. And, you know, people think it's so bleak. But, yeah, there are massively gifted, again, call them ascended masters, you know, archangels, yep. you know, in human form now that are here, as you were saying, or Judah was saying, or both of you guys were saying, uh, to lift the frequency of the masses. Right. I mean, and for sure. Folks like you and I, you know, our role is to be like Osho's grandparents. Right. Our, our, our role right. is just to give them a safe space, to let them roam and play and be what they are and evolve as they will. And, you know, sometimes people ask, right. ask me, um, they're kind of coming to Judah to ask for permission. I'm like, 
hey, you know, anything I can do, you can do better. That's right. That's right. You know, and that's my motto. If they want to channel, I'm like, yeah, let's do that. Uh, it's, you know, it's wide open. It's open season. And some of these young people that come to us, they, they're they reminiscent of Chuck's, you know, Chuck grew up in the, came up in the generation of the Ram Dass generation. He grew up sitting at the feet of his beloved enlightened master, truly enlightened being. And some of these young ones, they are that serious. Yeah, they are. Yeah. 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 There's no doubt. And again, they're here because the time is so instrumental Mm -hmm. because again, we are going through a planetary birth or a new earth consciousness frequency shift, whatever you want to call it, it's coming. And if you're not on the fast track or the fast train, then, you know, oh, well, right. But it's like, you know, you have a choice now to uh, get on that train or get on that track. I mean, again, there's so much information out there, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's so many of us now, like, you know, talking about this. And, you know, what I find, Angie, is that there really isn't even much deviation for people that are truly in the know. You know, I mean, like, it's all like, it, it really is like the energy of all of us. And it's, of course, the angels are channeling the energy into us, but we're all connecting in so many different ways. Like, sometimes I find it uncanny when I hear someone else say something on Instagram or something, you know, if I'm just like, you know, looking at my messages, because I try to stay off of social media, but you know, I got people messaging me there and I'll see something and I'll be like, how could that guy say that? I just said that yesterday. Or how right. could that woman say that mm-hmm. when like... I I thought the exact same thing. So it really is divinity or the divine forces are bringing all of the quote unquote divine resonant frequency consciousnesses of this generation, young people, people our age. And then of course there's even older people, more sage. Um, But we're all, we're all speaking from the same pulpit and and, and we're all, the words are the, really the same hymn. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And these, you know, angels like Judah, they're, um, you know, our friend Clayton Stedman, he has, is doing a lot of calibrations for us around the work we're doing. And, and, and Judah calibrates in the five thousands wow. way off the chart. And, and when I channel Judah, my, my level of consciousness bump, bumps up during yeah. that time. And so they're giving us this great grace, a gift to help us really move our vibrational set point up into those higher realms. And we are hearing a lot of the same things and, and, um, and moving, you know, we're, we're all radiating the same sun. I, I keep, the thing I keep thinking about for you, I'll let Judah share this. Yes, dear, you are, you are your own sun. You see, Uh uh-huh. As you gaze at the sun, as you talk about and think about this grand central sun, but you are the sun, you are radiating. And, and, and this vessel sees uh, like a sun radiating from around your head. And you are, you are going to emanate more and more light than you ever felt possible. And this light will energize and grow people, places, and things around you and even grow ideas. Yeah. I love that. One of the things Judah said early on is that they are looking for sunflowers. So I did a, a deep dive into sunflowers and they're called heliotropes. Yeah. Helio. And, and they will, in the uh, mature sunflowers, at the end of the night, they'll turn their head towards the east in preparation for the sunrise in the morning. And then there, as the sun rises, the sunflower turns its face all day long to follow the sun. And so this is what Judah is asking and looking for. These angels are looking for people who will very intentionally turn their face towards what is life-giving, what is positive, what is radiating and emanating high vibe energy. And so the thing about sunflowers is they grow to be 10 feet tall. They are giants Mm -hmm. in the world of flowers. Not only are they giants, get the metaphor there. See, Mm -hmm. you can become a spiritual giant if you have this determination to keep looking towards what is life-giving, towards life force energy. And not only that, but their, their hearts, their centers are packed with hundreds of seeds for more sunflowers. And see, that's what you are, Jay. That's what what I am. That's what we're doing here in this work. 
we are being very intentional and determined to look towards life force energy to take in this, this sun, so to speak, these metaphorical suns. And as we're doing that, we are producing many, many more sunflowers in the earth. You know, it was said, the Buddha said in his enlightenment, he had a dream the night that he became enlightened. And his enlightenment was instantaneous, by the way, in that dream state. He saw a multitude of Buddhas in the dream. And and that was also, I believe, the dream of the Christ, which has been so horribly distorted. Oh. But it's our dream, too. Right. See, you know, spiritual giants, you know, reproduce more spiritual giants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Buddhas can create more Buddhas. And any enlightenment's available for anyone. When I read, you know, this work that we talked about, you know, he, he had one little line buried in there that said that some people, most, he said, most people only gained five points on the scale of consciousness. That's right, in their entire life. lifetime. But some people can gain make major gains. And when I read that, something in my heart leapt up and I said, let that be me. Yes, let that God. be me. Yep. Yeah. Well, you were saying earlier, um, and I want to, this has been such an amazing podcast. I do want to talk about, you know, the webinar and your book and stuff, and I'll put them up. Actually, I'll just throw it up there right now. Um, it's, it's, how do I say it? It's, people can, it's, it's not even a matter of learning as much as it is remembering, right? And you exactly. said you said it's the experience, it's the feeling. It's 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 one of the problems that you know the young some of the younger people have today is they read because of the internet makes information so ubiquitous and there's like great teachers out there like right. you, like me, all these people, and so they can listen to us. But if they're 17, they don't have the experience, right? Yeah, they may have had it in the past lifetimes and all that stuff, and they could be more, you know, as a soul, way more ancient than us. But it's 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 interesting because it's just you sometimes see younger people being mimics. Like I like to say, like you know, they know the lyrics to the song, but they can't feel the tune. I know you get that. Yeah. Uh huh. But but so but it's like as us, we also can't be judgmental or condem condemnational because maybe they are, some of them are such masters that they do find or remember, you know, everything at 16 or 15 that they've already known. Cause again, at soul as souls, we do know everything. We just choose to forget when we come into the third dimension through the veil of, of, of uh, forgetfulness uh, in through reincarnation. But it's, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a really interesting time to be alive. And I find it that like, one of my problems used to be that I would like look at some of these young kids and be like, dude, you're 16, you know, or, or you're 19, you know, like you're, you're, you're attempting to be a life coach. And so it's right. like some of these people, you got to actually talk to them. Like you got to get into their energy and feel their presence. And then you're going to be like, whoa, this dude is a little bit different. And I can't like just say, you know, dismiss him like out of hand because he's so young. So you're right. I mean, if it, it, was well, it, takes, a, it takes an incredible amount of discernment because, you know, there's an old phrase that says, be wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove. That's right. So, That's right. so we're holding space and 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 making room to to love all and receive all, but we were, we're being discerning also as well and discerning energy. Yeah. See, words don't mean anything. It's no. the energy and the heart behind it. Yeah. And you know, when sometimes with Judah, you know, we'll be in a session and and just almost immediately the person will begin weeping and weeping and weeping. And I'll say, what's going on? They say, I don't know. I just feel so loved. I feel so loved. So we've, we've got to have that discernment, mm. you know, uh, and, and be watching for that beautiful energy where, where we feel it. We feel the comfort. We feel the love. We feel uh, our bodies. Suddenly we feel like a, a, a fresh wind has come through the room uh, we feel more life, and, and you know the people that we're around that which feel shitty when we're around them. We wish we had Ener gone. It, the energy vampires, yeah. And, you know, environment is everything. I, I teach young people this: environment is everything, and meditate. Just meditate, meditate, mm -hmm. meditate, because meditate is the place where you begin to remember 
That's right. You remember the feeling of bliss. You remember the feeling of wholeness. You remember the feeling of being free from your mind. But, and, 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 and guarding your environment because environment is everything. If You know, so many people are blowing their vibrational diet. That's how Judah says it. I love that. They do so much work in meditation. They do so much work in listening to good teachings and working with folks like you, um, coaches that are leading them in the right direction. But then they go hang out with somebody that's, that's just stirred. destroys it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to say or, or or speak to what you were just saying about meditation because so many people hear the word meditation, Angie, and they just get turned off. I can't do that. Right. I can't sit in the lotus position. And so I, you know, I always tell people like, honestly, meditation is exactly what you make of it. Meditation can literally be you sitting out in the sun sure. at six forty-five in the morning, gazing in the sun, getting that red light, getting that spiritual central sun energy transforming your your uh your latent dna right your introns mm-hmm. turning them back on because you've been detuned you've been you've been uh had your a lot of your dna turned off or it can literally be just you sitting in a cool dark dry spot in your house by yourself for seven minutes and just being grateful yeah just I mean, there's out. so many forms of it, but people mm-hmm. get so caught up into the idea they have to be in the lotus position, listening to headspace or stupid. I mean, it's just like, it's become this, like, again, it's been hijacked. Yeah, exactly. It's literally bypassed it's so itself. Simple. It's so simple. Yeah. It's it just, it, it, it can be just as simple as a big, long inhale right. and a big, long exhale. Yes. If you just did that, if you just did that three times every hour at the top of the hour, you'd be transformed. And, you know, when I first started meditating, I, I hated it. It was very difficult. A lot of times I'd fall asleep and I would try to listen to enlightened teachers. And, and my mind was so against and so pushing against the transformation that I would fall asleep. Mm. Yeah, it was like I, I would feel like somebody had inoculated me with drugs. My mind was fighting. But, you know, I kept at it. Now I love to yeah. meditate. Two, you know, get two hours a day. I, I love it. And, and it is transformative. I, I can do- actually do it on a bike. A, yeah, a, stationary bike in my, a stationary bike in right here in my office. I have a, just a great spiritual work that I'm reading as I'm riding my bike. And before you know it, I'm completely gone. Exactly. People say, what does that mean, Jay? Well, I mean, I'm not leaving my body. I mean, there's there's times I feel like I could, but I'm just so deeply, quote unquote, in the work Yes, that my physical body is actually exercising, right? Because it needs yeah, that. Exactly. It's like pumping the heart. But my mind is actually in the path of the energy. And so it's like sometimes, I'm not kidding you, I also listen to a uh, a chakra healing arts technology where I can go uh, from mm-hmm. crown to root or root to crown. I can reverse it. I can even spend time in certain chakras that I feel like I need, you know, cause when you do this a lot, like you and I do, and I've been doing it for a long time, we literally know the chakras that need tuning. Right. 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 Cause as soon as you hear that frequency, it's like, Oh wow. You know, I need to spend a little bit more time here, but I've found myself sometimes for 30 minutes, this, the time just, it disappears. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're in no mind in the stillness, you know, Mm -hmm. in the quote unquote grace of the heaven, King of heaven slash the the kingdom of heaven, there is no time. Right. So that's when you come out and you're like, Oh my God, you know, like what just happened? And, 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 and so that's why, like, I like to tell people, like, like you said, the key is continuity. Keep doing it. Yeah, even You'll if it's five minutes a day, just don't stop. And yeah, I, I mean, five minutes right? becomes ten minutes, and then it becomes yeah. two hours. And I have a free meditation guide. Anybody that wants to email us, we will send it to them. Um, it's just one page. It's short and sweet, and it's just a really good basic place to start. But it, it really is the place of magic. You can go into a meditation with some real serious shit going on in your three D reality, and you can come out of it having completely let it go. And then 10 minutes later, you're going to get the phone call telling you that it's been resolved. You know, and this is what Judas taught me. The work, spiritual work is done in meditation and it doesn't feel like work at all. No. First meditate, later, maybe, possibly take action. First right. meditate. First meditate, take action. Well, see, I love what you told me, again, without sharing publicly, the key in this reality, and again, we're going into Hawkins now, is this isn't even real, as you know. 
right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we are imagining this, meaning these third dimensional, again, call us meat sickles. My good, you know, one of my mentors, Gerald Clark, used to call us meat modems, right? Because we have antennas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 the reality is, is this is a totally imagined again for our energy, which is our soul slash spiritual selves, to evolve and grow so that quote unquote God source universal consciousness also evolves and grows with us, right? You say that to somebody who's religious and they're like, What God is perfect and omnipotent and omniscient? They're not growing from us. Anyway, I'm not gonna go any deeper. <laughs> but, but the reality is is that when we can get to that place where we understand that we are not even real mm -hmm. and that where we place our consciousness, which is existing, is what we're going to get, nothing bad can happen to you, right? Because again, if you place your consciousness in a darker, lower vibrational frequency, and again, it can be anything. And as you know, every single day we're challenged. Every single day something happens to us that if we place our consciousness in it, Right. Because of the law of attraction, because of quantum physics, thoughts become things. Uh, what stays in mind tends to manifest. We create the reality. So again, don't, don't focus, focus on negative, on negative things. things. Don't focus on what things that happen to you in your life that you label bad. Don't label it bad, but that's you know a yeah. little bit different, higher level. Just don't acknowledge bad or negative things and focus your energy, your mind, your creative power on things that you want to manifest that hopefully, and most people that do do this, are in service to the greater good or creation or to all, to the collective consciousness. And you're never going to have any of the bad things. But that's the thing, as you were saying off the air, is sometimes you get hit with these things that come up out of nowhere and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. And then if you well, fixate on it, you start running mm -hmm. away in negative thought processes. Exactly. Okay. So I have the perfect illustration for this. In September of 2017, in, in Mexico City, there was an earthquake. Uh, uh, there was a story in the news in 2017. So in 1985, there was a major earthquake that you might know about in Mexico City. 5,000 yeah. people died. Yeah, I remember it was that. very, very tragic. Well, in 2017, on the anniversary date of the original earthquake, the city was doing a drill to uh, to practice in the event of another similar tragedy of an earthquake. Well, guess what? The whole city was giving their attention to the tragedy that had happened so many years before where 5,000 people died. They were mourning. They were remembering. Remember you right. said that word remember? Yep. And they were doing this citywide seismic drill. And guess what? Created it. Another earthquake. And several hundred people died. Yeah. They cr literally so, created that reality with their thoughts. Streams. With their attention. Yeah. So law of attraction, you know, Judah taught us has to be balanced by the law of attention. Right. So if we really want to master our creative, you know, that we're the creator, we're creating everything in an envir environment, we really have to master our attention. That's right. So being like those sunflowers, even though there's a lot of crap going on, it's not that we're trying to be foolish or ignore it or bury our head in sand. It's not that. We know those things are there, but we are determined that we're going to look towards a better and brighter outcome. Right, right. Uh, it's like I like to say you have to opt out of the third dimensional duality and polarity, mm -hmm. right? Like, yes, exactly. be aware, be conscious of it, but don't give it attention. Don't mm -hmm. fixate on it. Don't be caught up into it. Don't be listening to news channels, you know, with various prognosticators or talking heads who are predicting exactly. and all this stuff, because that's when you're sucked into it. And I'll just leave you with this. You know, obviously the Bible is, is uh, you know, be, be in this world, not of this world. When you're in this world, you're, you're creating. Mm -hmm. When you're of this world, you're consuming. Yes. And the dark side yeah. wants you never to be creative. They want you to be a consumer. They just mm -hmm. literally want you to mm -hmm. be sucked in to their negative frequency. So if you're not of this realm and you're in this realm, which is as souls we all are, then if you constantly create, you will be creating a conscious frequency that is, again, in service to the greater good or to the all, and you never have to worry about being stuck in a third dimension. But as you know, so many people do get stuck here because it's it's really easy to get stuck. <laughs> it is. But, you know, it goes back to what you open up the conversation today with and that it's all about our interior work. 
if we're faithful every day to take care of our own business, yes. our own interior business, and then we just begin emanating more and more light, you know, um, back to, um, you know, one of my favorite bookmarked pages here, one person, one enlightened person can back counterbalance the negativity of 70 million individuals yes, below the right. level of 200. That's and right. one person, just one at the level of peace can counterbalance the negative energy of 10 million people on the earth. Yes. So I don't really have to be anything. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to save the world. All I have to do is be the light that I am, be that sun, be that grand central sun, be focused on what is light and life giving and it's taking care of everything else. It's so beautiful. Counterbalancing so much negativity. And that's how we change the world by just loving the person in front of us and be in the light for that one, just that one. If Judah said the other night in a channel, if everybody loved right now in this moment, loved the one person in front of them completely, thoroughly, unconditionally, the world would be instantly transformed. That's right. The matrix would end. It would end. Angie, this has been such an amazing podcast. It's been so fun. No, honestly, I'm so grateful that you were here and that we got a chance to talk. I'm definitely going to ask you for your cell phone when I end this, but um, I, I, I'm going to give you the final thoughts, but um, maybe ask Judah for just one last question. Like, cause this is, you know, on so many people's minds and no, we're not fixating on it, but you know, so many people are hearing about, what may be coming with like the social credit system and them collapsing the currency with the CBDC and all that stuff. Like that's like one of the main questions I get from people who are technically, you know, like, Jay, I know the golden age is coming. I know we're building the new earth, but like how much darker does it have to get? Like, you know, what's next? So, I mean, can you maybe ask you to like, is that frequency coming and people are just going to be able to live where they place their consciousness meaning there'll be a separate timeline, a separate reality of, let's mm -hmm. say, dark and then light. I mean, but, mm -hmm. or is that just more fear-based programming that we don't have to aspire to? Okay, we will answer this. The, the next 18 months are going to be in a, a, a time of extraordinary shaking, especially for those in America. Mm -hmm. Everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. So, uh, we encourage each and every one of you to plant your feet firmly in the ground of love, of the earth, of nature, of meditation, and in peace. We encourage you to do your interior work to the degree that you are not moved, not moved at all by anything going on around you. We encourage you to, to, to be very careful about what you listen to and connect your in energy and intention to. We are asking you to withdraw your attention from all the shaking and turmoil that is going to happen. We are asking you to unplug and disconnect from all fear on both sides of the aisle. We ask you to come up, 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 up above political parties all together. We ask you to disassociate from political affiliation altogether. We ask you to be a higher dimensional soul that lives and moves and breathes and functions above the realms of earthbound time and space and and completely extract yourself from conditioning of the mind and association with what is going to go on we are not saying not to go and cast your vote we are saying you must look inside for your answer and be separate from all of this all of this that will happen. And we are asking all nations of the earth to send their love and grace and powerful intentions to the United States for this time. Now you ask, can some exist in different planes? Yes, we will tell you this vessel will never have to think about where, uh, how she will be provided for. She will always, most certainly, be provided for in every realm. Mm -hmm. 
every material realm, every need will be provided for, and she can remain untouched by any and all things that are un, 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 untoward, that are un, un, unworthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so may you all, you may create literally a paradise in the middle of hell. You may literally be held in peace in the midst of the most extraordinary storm. You may be held in the eye of the storm. If this is your intention, it shall be so. And there will be nothing that you need worry about for yourself or those that you love. Take care, take care, take care. Mm -hmm. Does that help? answer your question that's amazing stuff we will we, we will definitely see it is a very very interesting time to be living in the third dimension you know on the plane planet realm whatever this is of earth so i mean again i, I just i'm so grateful that you were here today and that you and i were able to talk and share this energy it's absolutely amazing yeah so um so guys obviously um they have a free webinar, The Three Dimensions of True You. It's the judachannel.com forward slash webinar. She also has the book, which is the answer to all your questions. It's tinyurl.com forward slash judah, J-U-D-A-H, book. Um, you have the final words. Any, anything else you want to say before we let I let you go? I would just say anybody that feels a connection to, to Judah or what we've talked about today, we would love to just embrace you, welcome you into our family. I don't know exactly how that happens, but Judah's just asked me to be a mother to all and to love all that come to us and, and even the ones that we never meet, but we connect uh, in the way that we can through technology. And we are absolutely sending our love, our warm our warmest hugs and well wishes for your journey and we'll support you any way that we can. And uh, we're so honored to be here, Jay. We, we love you and we're here to serve you and the Jay Campbell family any way that we can, anytime. Thank you, Judah. And thank you, Angie. And I'm here to serve and to love you guys equally back. And uh, the, re you. the divine reciprocity that I have right now is just amazing. So again, for all of you guys, uh, Two, two URLs to go to, the judachannel.com forward slash webinar. It's a free webinar. You get much more information. By the way, you also have your free quotes, which I signed up for oh, about they're, weeks ago. Oh, they're amazing. No, they're absolutely amazing. I was literally just going to share that. And then, of okay. course, the book, which I just had up here. It's tinyurl.com forward slash Judah book. But, yeah, also go and get the quotes. And, of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.